Do you remember your first time on a bike? But when you start paddling, it is much easier to stay vertical. We are going to look at the behavior of rotating objects today. In three dimensions, an object can rotate in three different ways. So this object can rotate with respect to the axis which is vertical, rotating with respect to the axis which is sideways, and rotate with respect to the axis which is front and back. Now, imagine this disk is rotating in the counterclockwise direction in, along the horizontal plane. This rotational motion of the disk in three dimensions singles out the direction which is perpendicular to the axis uh, to the plane of rotation. And to describe this motion, just like when the object is translating, we often talk about the momentum of the object as a vector which points along the direction when the object is moving. In the rotational motion case, we also use a vector which point, in this case points along the direction singled out by the rotational motion. In this case, it's the up and down axis again. And we call this vector the angular momentum vector. How do we define the convention of which way the angular momentum is pointing? We take our right hand and we take our four fingers to curl around the direction the object is rotating. And our thumb will be pointing towards the direction of the angular momentum. Let's consider how we can interact with an object to change its angular momentum. Here is a simulation of paddling on a bike. The window to the right provides a view from the front of the bicycle. Notice that to cause the rotation, the force on the paddle is applied a distance away from the axis of rotation, which we call the pivot. The vector going from the pivot to the paddle is the le lever arm. The force on the paddle and the lever arm, which is labeled OP here, together define the plane of rotation. And we can use the right-hand rule to determine the direction of the change of the angular momentum by curling the four fingers from the lever arm vector to the force vector. We call the change of angular momentum torque. We see in the simulation the torque is into the page when viewed from the side of the bike or to the right when viewed from the front side of the bike, as shown by the blue arrow. The magnitude of the torque is proportional to both the magnitude of the lever arm vector and the force vector, and the angle between them too. It is largest when the lever arm and the force are perpendicular, smallest when they are parallel. When the bike tire is tilted a little, gravitational force can exert a torque on the tire. The pivot is at where the tire touches the ground. The lever arm is from the pivot to the center of mass of the tire, and the gravitational force points downward. The resultant torque is pointing out of the page. Now, when the wheel is rotating in the counterclockwise direction, we can use our right-hand rule again to find out that the angle of momentum of the system is pointing along the blue arrow. We also see earlier when the wheel is tipping under the influence of uh, gravity, gravity exerts a forward torque onto the system. The vector nature of the angular momentum tells us that we need to add these two uh, components together <laughs> to obtain the final angular momentum, which means that we go from the beginning of the first arrow to the tip of the second arrow, and which is indicated by this black arrow here. Now, since the black arrow points in that in the direction which is a little bit forward, the wheel will try to align its axis of rotation to the final direction of the total angle momentum, which means that the wheel will be turning this way. Therefore, when you're on a bicycle, as your wheels are turning, and even if you're tipping a little bit due to gravity, instead of falling, 
the wheel would tend to rotate a little bit to align its axis rotation with its angular momentum. And with a little adjustment of the handle, you can stay vertical on your bike and continue riding. Let's look at another example of interaction between angular momentum and torque. When the wheel is not spinning, the wheel will tumble when you let it go. Now, when we give the wheel an angular momentum to start, the torque by gravitational force will interact with the existing angular momentum, causing the wheel to rotate around the rope instead. This is called precession. Let's start with an angular momentum in the opposite direction. Precession has been used to stabilize gyroscopes when ships are traveling around the globe. Hope you have enjoyed watching the video and we'll explore more about rotational motion around you.